As a kid, I was always fascinated with history. I read about it, I watched documentaries, but now I want to visit and walk the ground of those historic places that I've spent years studying. Join me on my trek, History Adventures. Today in History Adventures, we're going to be taking a walk around Alligator Creek, the location of the Battle of the Tenaru on Guadalcanal. Alligator Creek, or the Battle of the Tenaru, is a significant location here on Guadalcanal. It is in many documentaries, movies, TV shows, and books. So let's take a look at the history and then walk around the area. In May 1942, the Japanese invaded Guadalcanal and the surrounding islands. They immediately began building an airfield on Guadalcanal. This airfield attracted the attention of the Allies, and Operation Watchtower was developed to capture Guadalcanal and the surrounding islands. The marine landings on Guadalcanal and Tulagi surprised the Japanese. The response from the Japanese forces was swift, and the naval battle of Salvo Island on August 8, 1942, had the Allied naval forces withdraw from the area by the evening of August 9th. The Marines formed their defenses around the airfield, now called Henderson Field. The Japanese believed that since the Allied shipping had withdrawn from the area, most of the ground forces had also withdrawn from Guadalcanal. The Japanese formulated a plan to land troops on Guadalcanal and retake the airfield. On August 19, 1942, 900 plus troops of the Japanese Ichiki Detachment arrived on Guadalcanal. These were elite battle hardened troops with a history of battle victories. Their orders were to scout the marine positions and wait for the remainder of the detachment to arrive, roughly 1,200 more troops. Ichiki, believing his troops can retake the airfield, began to move. Solomon Islanders and Coast Watchers spot the Japanese troops east of the Lunga Point perimeter. On August 19th, the Marines sent out a patrol to find and ambush the Japanese forward patrol. They kill all but five of the troops. The Marines find documents on one of the Japanese officers with detailed intelligence of the Marine positions around Lunga Point. There's also details of a much larger Japanese force on Guadalcanal. The Marines with this valuable information reinforced their position on the west side of the Ilu River. The Marines called it Alligator Creek, and Marine maps misidentified it as the Tenaru. The Marines work all day on the 20th preparing their defensive positions. Ichiki realizes his forward patrol was annihilated and the element of surprise is now gone. He rapidly moves his troops towards the Marine lines. On the east side of the river, Marines at a forward listening post hear noises of approaching troops and withdraw back to the Marine lines on the west side of the river. After being captured and tortured by the Japanese, Coast Watcher Jacob Vuza escapes and arrives at the Marine lines and warns them of the approaching Japanese troops. On August 21, 1942, at approximately 1.30 a.m., Ichiki with about 800 of his men move through the Coconut Grove and arrive on the east bank of the Ilu. They open fire with machine guns and mortars on the Marines on the west side of the river. Roughly 100 Japanese troops cross the sandbar and engage the Marines in hand-to-hand -hand combat. A company of Marines held in reserve now attacks, ending the first wave attack of the Japanese. At approximately 2.30 a.m., the Japanese attack again with 150 to 200 troops. Marines firing a 37mm anti-tank cannon now loaded with canister shot and machine gun fire kills most of the Japanese on the sandbar. The Japanese again use mortars to bombard the Marine lines. The Marine response is with heavy artillery that barrage the Japanese troops on the east side of the Ilu River. At 5 a.m., the Japanese attempt another attack. This time, many of the Japanese troops wade out into the surf to get to the beaches on the west side of the creek. Machine gun fire, the 37mm firing canister, and Marine small arm fire causes heavy casualties on the Japanese troops, and the attack is stopped. Ichiki, either unable or unwilling to withdraw from the area, remains with his troops in the coconut grove on the east side of the Ilu River. At daybreak on the morning of the 21st, the Marines counterattack. Crossing the river upstream, the Marines surround Ichiki and his men. Planes from Henderson Field strafe the Japanese troops fleeing down the beach. Marine M3 Stewart tanks move in and sweep through the coconut grove with machine gun and canister fire. By 5 p.m. on August 21, 1942, the battle is over. 
Colonel Achiki either died in battle or committed suicide. Roughly 30 or so Japanese troops escaped the area to rejoin the Japanese troops east of the Tenaru. Approximately 800 Japanese troops were killed in the area around Alligator Creek. There is an incredible story about three Marines manning a machine gun during the Battle of Alligator Creek. The three Marines, Corporal Lee Diamond, Private First Class John Rivers, and Private Al Schmid, had a sandbag and coconut log bunker built very near the mouth of the Ilu River and the sandbar. During the fighting, Rivers was killed by Japanese fire and Diamond was shot in the arm. Schmid took over the firing of the machine gun. A Japanese soldier would get close enough to the bunker to throw a grenade inside. Schmid would be blinded from the blast and Diamond would have both his arms and hands severely injured. Schmid would continue to load and fire the machine gun, taking verbal directions from Diamond. After the battle, 200 dead Japanese troops were near the bunker. If you read the book Helmet for My Pillow by Robert Lecky, he was located in this general area during the battle. To think about what this area looked like after the battle, 800 Japanese soldiers killed in just this small area, mostly on the beach and sandbar. Let's continue to walk around the area of Alligator Creek. I hope you liked this episode on History Adventures. Please comment and like the video if you would. Please subscribe to our page, I truly appreciate it. And watch for more videos coming up from the Solomon Islands. Thanks a lot and we'll see you in a couple days.